The movie begins with news headlines reporting that an unnamed lethal virus is destroying the Earth's environment. Several attempts have been undertaken by world-renowned experts, but none have been effective since the frequency of natural disasters is increasing substantially, and everyone anticipates that the planet will become livable in a short amount of time. Meanwhile, Dr. Stephen Ross, the Project Gemini Earth 2.0 project's leader, and his colleagues have uncovered an old alien device called the Sphere, which they think might be the origin of life, as well as an unnamed engine. The crew behind Project Gemini is able to reproduce these alien items using the same exact materials and finds a new livable planet named Tess using a mechanism that enables humanity to travel far into space. Not only that, but they've broken many codes to use the orb, which has its own language and ambitions to build a new home for humanity, which includes Leona, Peter, David and Mayor Ryan Connell. We'll proceed on an expedition to physically observe the planet's state and install the sphere. Amy, Steve's wife, attempts to stop her husband from leaving, but she is too late since the spaceship has already left. Something appears from the sphere when Steve and Peter are inspecting the engine, signaling that they are not alone. After some time in space, the personnel are finally ready for the jump and begin the operation. However, something goes wrong during the leap, and they end themselves in an unknown region of the galaxy. Steve accuses Peter of not following the jump process and orders him out of the cockpit, but Peter claims that he checked everything before they jumped. They are now completely stranded in the galaxy and are unable to return since they cannot discover identifiable landmarks or data to explain their present location. Peter, on the other hand, shuts off the security camera and proceeds to check the engine on his own. Soon after the spacecraft detects an approaching object, it turns out to be Peter's dying corpse. The whole crew panics, and hopeless David fears Peter will commit suicide if the mission fails. After they have grieved, they realize that there is a neighboring planet that is a far better candidate for terraforming than Tess. Steve, the mission commander, intends to investigate the planet, but Ryan and Richard object since it is too dangerous and the planet is still unstable due to its early age. Their viewpoints are useless, though since Steve makes the ultimate choice and the other teams must follow. The docking process is requested, and Ryan and Richard Steve, along with other crew members, move closer to the planet. The field team successfully landed on the planet after surviving the storm. Scenes shift to Steve, gifting his wife a magnificent necklace made of spherical material. Back to present, Richard reports that the aircraft has run out of fuel, which means they can't return to the mothership and are stuck there. They locate a suitable cave and promptly prepare to bring the sphere inside it. They begin installing the sphere as soon as they get in the cave. They then return to the aircraft. Meanwhile, Richard, who is alone with them on the other ship, discovers a translucent gel and, by chance, uncovers a video of Peter before he was expelled from the spacecraft. That evening, he informs the other teams about the tape, which suggests that Peter was murdered by an unknown person instead of by suicide. He also learns that the living form, labeled the Trojan Horse, has emerged from the sphere and is presently on a cruise ship. Yen realizes Steve is concealing something about the sphere and wants him to tell the whole team the truth. The scene shifts to Steve examining the sphere on Earth when he comes across an unidentified human being, and he refuses to discuss the anomaly he discovered earlier and walks away. Along with Steve back to the plane, Steve asks David to join him quietly back to the sphere. At first, he refuses because Ryan is now in command but he changes his mind after Steve tells him that they are humanity's last hope to defeat the emerging virus on Earth. Upon arrival, they adjust the setting of the sphere as the Trojan slowly approaches them. David panics and begins firing at the sphere, deactivating it. They hurry back and barely make it to the aircraft. Ryan approaches them and informs Steve that he no longer has the authority to make choices. The aircraft's alarm goes off, signifying that the Trojan has broken inside the plane. Leona who is still perplexed by the emergency scenario, wanders down the hallway and inadvertently notices the Trojan in the lab. Thankfully, she makes it to the control room. The whole crew has assembled in the control room, where the Trojan cannot be broken since the plane's primary generator has failed. They are unable to access the camera after losing communication with the jet. Steve offers to connect all of the electrical gadgets to the backup generator so that the security camera and communications may be restored. Steve is able to restore the aircraft but Trojan approaches there and Ryan pull back Steve in order to save him. They devise a plan to doctor op the Trojan outside the aircraft, with Steve acting as the major decoy. He successfully traps the Trojan in a chamber as the others prepare to open the airlocks. Leona manually releases the Trojan when all airlocks have been opened, and it instantly races towards Steve who has been waiting near the engine nozzles. Leona attempts to divert the Trojan's attention for a few moments until the engine starts, but it is too late, and she died instead of Trojan. 
Steve returns to the ship while the Trojan returns to the cave. Fortunately for them, they were able to grab one of its tentacles. The scene shifts back to Amy urging Steve to abandon the expedition endeavor, but he refuses. Even when she confesses that she is pregnant on the other side, she is also working on a virus vaccine. And she says Steve please don't go in space, but Steve reject her wish. Enraged she throws away the bracelet. Back to the Steve. Steve analyses a part of a tentacle and discovers that it was made of the same material as the sphere. While David is resting in a weakened state after being infected by the virus, he discovers that the tentacle is a transporter. Ryan has lost faith in Steve and chooses to confine him in the lab. He continues his experiment with the tentacle and the fragment and realizes that they did not move in space all this time, but rather time traveled to 4 billion years ago. Richard then realizes that the planet in front of them is Earth. Steve claims that the fragment is the same as the one he handed Amy. He also realizes that the sphere on Earth today and the one they built are the same sphere, but at a different period, since they can't help people on Earth. Steve intends to inform Amy about the virus and, in turn, assist her in developing a vaccine. He knows the sphere will stay in the cave until that day, and he will also give her the peace. He will write a note for her in the fragment, instructing her on how to join the sphere. He is convinced that Amy will miss him and return to the bracelet to retrieve the code. Meanwhile, Ryan, who is still unaware of the reality, intends to blow up the sphere. Richard now backs him up and unlocks the lab, asking him to contact Ryan in person and explain everything. He recommends luring the Trojan into the aircraft and destroying it with the bomb. However, David appears out of nowhere and shoots everyone. He has gone insane, claiming that no one should suffer since no one was created. Steve shoots him and Dr. Ives him away. Following that, Steve detonates the explosives and uses a flare to attract the Trojan inside the jet. The beast appears, fully showing itself, and corners Steve, but he manages to flee. When challenged by David, who has been impaled by the Trojan, he escapes the aircraft just before the bomb explodes, destroying the whole aircraft. Steve is the only survivor, but he only has an hour when his oxygen tank gets shot in the midst of the storm. He returns to the cave immediately and reactivates the sphere. Meanwhile, Amy, who discovers the bracelet with the code engraved on it, rushes to the sphere and successfully activates it. The sphere connects her to Steve, who tells her of the equation and the chemicals required to manufacture the vaccine. Steve apologizes and communicates his thoughts for the final time before leaving. Amy gives birth to the kid and develops the vaccine at the end of the movie.